Hi guys, Mr. John here. In this video, I'm gonna go assemble this board. I'm gonna do it more or less quick way to save your time and to save my patience. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna populate the primary side. I'm gonna put in the bridge rectifier, capacitor, all the necessary parts for the transistors. And I'm gonna bother with the common mode choke and the filtering capacitors because I did not wind. Um, I don't have that common mode choke ready to go at the moment. So it's just a matter of popping the components in, soldering them on the other side. There is quite a lot of components in the this section, which is um, shaping circuit for the basis of the transistors. Also here will be installed two capacitors that will form the other half of the bridge. Also this is a jumper. Yes, unfortunately this board contains three jumpers, one under the chip, second here and third right there in the primary side but that's what you get if you want to cram everything onto the single sided board there's no other way around pretty much so let me gather some components and solder them in I'm just gonna show you some small snippets of me soldering then I'm gonna show you the finished primary side then I'm gonna show you that it indeed self oscillates but in order for it to do that I will have to put in the gate or base drive transformer in this case and the power transformer but I ain't gonna populate anything on the secondary side so it won't interfere with it all right I populated some of the components you can see the bridge right there capacitor and the half bridge capacitors. I, I also ran some capacitance checks to make sure that this value of these two capacitors are reasonably close, is reasonably close. And both uh, checked, this one was about 218, this one is 219 nanofarads, which is close enough. You want them to be quite close. Now, you can see the leads have been pre-cut. I'm gonna zoom in. It would have been nicer to just bring you closer, but fortunately I can't. Let's set it like this. Two times a zoom, roughly, should be good enough. Okay, let's see how it goes without the uh, additional flux. Let's make sure it's in short to start with. Put a bit of solder on the tip. Too much. That's what. That's why you need fine solder for. Let's check. Oh boy, it is just beautiful, John. Could use a little bit more solder though. Just a tad bit more. Let me show you. As you can see, it's a concave shape. I would call it acceptable, but it's a, it has just a little bit too, just a, could use a little bit more solder. As you can see, you don't necessarily need additional flux. If your board is clean and your component leads are clean. I cheated though. I went and prepared a lid of the components. I cleaned them with a, first I took this rubber eraser and I took the component and I did something like this. I cleaned the leads nice and good. Then I took the clean rag and I wiped them clean. You can use solvents for that. 
isopropyl alcohol or acetone, whatever. I just didn't bother, I just cleaned it with a nice clean rag that I know is free from any grease and stuff like that. And the result is fantastic, as you can see. Let's try a few more. Make sure it's oriented the nice way and it's still in shot. Oh, it's a pain. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the right one. This is the right stuff. As you can see, it is a concave shape and it has a bit more solder than this one. That one is the joint you want to see. The surface is nice and shiny. It's not a disturbed joint, it's not a cold joint. The amount of solder is just right. If you want for more detail on how the proper joint should look like and some tips, some really good tips about soldering, visit a channel called Pace Worldwide. Oh, and the fridge just kicked in. Basically, that channel is owned by the Pace Incorporated, and there they posted a lot, quite a lot of their old videos, old tutorials or uh, lessons on soldering, PCB repair and stuff like that. Those videos are old, they are from the 80s, but they are quite and quite nice. They give you a lot of detail on how to do it properly, what should not to do. They're really nice. Pay your, if you have some free time, watch them. They are worth it. They will give you enough and uh, quite a lot of interesting um, they will show you quite a in few interesting aspects about soldering that you probably did not know before. So you saw some soldering. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and um, finish this primary side, put the gate drive transformer in place and the power transformer in place. Nothing will be on the secondary side. I'm just gonna connect probably a light bulb to the secondary and see will it oscillate or not. So that's now. So, so that's that for now. Okay, primary side assembled. And you know, Johnny wouldn't be a Johnny if he uh, if he would not mess up. And how did I mess up this time, you might ask? Well, when I was laying out the board I took out the dimension of the core of this transformer. Instead of taking the dimension of the actual transformer with the windings on it, because obviously if you have some wire on the outside, then some insulation, then some more wire and couple layers like this, the overall pie adds up to quite a bit larger diameter than you expect. And this one does fit quite snugly, but it's not the worst fit. Well, the power transform is a whole another story. I'll probably have to go and put a bit of tape over this wire, lay it flat, put a little bit of tape over it, because the outside wire you see is a secondary and the transformer would sit like this on it. The primary one is going to be soldered to this wire, into this, into this hole, and the secondary center tap here, and two ends right here and right there. Ah, beautiful, but anyway, as you can see, I did put NTC there, 4.7 ohms in this case, just what I had to hand not that critical. Let's put it this way. The light bulb is there as you can see. Alright. 
gonna plug it in there. It's focused. The brief spike you see is the capacitor charges up, charging up because again this time the light bulb is on AC side. And you can see light bulbs are nice and bright. The transistors are not hot during that time, which is nice. So that's that. I'm gonna continue assembling it and continue crying about my failure. I really sh should have thought this through better. Because, uh, I focus you, cat damn it. Right here, there should be a capacitor and a resistor, RC snap record the primary. And you can see that I had a little bit of space here. I could have shifted those components there. And this way I would have gained some space for the transformer, but I did not do that. And unfortunately, yeah, this transformer is, you can see it fits just barely in there. Ah, everything started so nicely as it usually is in my case. I lay the board which is nice, you know, short tracks, fat, nice stuff. Nice separation between primary and secondary. Nice tin in there as you can see, not too bad again because you saw the how bad the printout is in the previous video. And then bam, it's ruined by this poor spacing. What can I say? Yeah, let me cry off camera. And you, in the next part you will see this secondary assembled and the power supply running. And the fridge just kicked in. That's a sign to sign off right here. All right, the scene is together now. And uh, yeah, as you can see, I was very, very sad about that transformer placement, but oh well, it does fit, but barely, as you can see, it fits, but it forced me, it forced me to put it in such a way that the capacitors are in this primary snubber which the phone refuses to focus on. That blue bastard has to be tilted like this, which is not great. Resistor is on this side because I'm not sure about the value of it. But overall, the board is not cleaned from flux yet and I need to go and tin these numbers. But that aside, it works just fine if I'm gonna plug it in. This bulb is the limiter, you will see it flash as the capacitor charges. Okay, well, you will see when I plug it in. As you can see, just works. The output is about 25 volts. There we go. You can see what the A name says. 25 volts. Can nudge it down a little bit, but oh well. Frequency, by the way, is... Oh, excuse me. can show you the frequency. Okay. 41.2 kilohertz. That's fine. Okay. 
I have the resistor which smells a bit funky there. That hundred ohm. That you see starts discovering there. I really need like 330 ohms there who will be going to use that value instead. But yeah, long story short, I was quite again I was quite butthurt about the fact that it does not look the way I wanted it to, but oh well, you see it works. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna you do a little trickery to properly choose the um, values of capacitor and resistor there, which are near each other, this ceramic and that resistor near it. Uh, these are in the loop compensation. So I'm gonna go and spend some time making the jig that will help me watch the behavior of the power supply as the load changes. And then judging by that behavior, I will choose the proper values of resistor or capacitor. <laughs> 